Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Antonimo Bay. And over the past couple days, I've had a lot of mail show up. Um, I've been on a push to complete and get a couple comic grails that have been something that's, that I've really wanted. So all of my mail has showed up in the last several days, so I have a pile of stuff here to go through uh, that I'd share with you guys. First off, I have this uh, little stack of Ninja Turtle comics that my wife bought me at a thrift store, which is fantastic. I have this lot of Jungle Girl comics from AC, which is a series that I have, that has been like something I've been dying to get my hands on. Um, I got this stack, big stack, of Veronica comics, and then I bought a random um, 200 issues for 50 bucks online, just kind of to see what I would get. I'm in the mood for independence lately, so I ordered a pile of independence. Well, there's quite a few books to go through, so I'm going to start running through them. First, I'm going to show the ones my wife got me, because they mean a great deal to me. Um, she knows I have a kajillion comics, and so for her to find something that I didn't have that I wanted is rare. But I've got um, issue number three of The Mighty Mutanimals, which is a spinoff of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Adventures from Archie. Um, she got me issue number seven. Issue number 35 and issue number 48. And I have always loved these things. These are in rough shape, but they are, they were my, my favorite Ninja Turtle series growing up. So I am super happy to see those. Super happy to, I'm just thrilled. I love the art in these things. I love that these are kind of beat up because, you know, that's how they always were when I had them. Anyway. Super excited about those and very pleased. Next we have a series that I have wanted ever since I heard about them. And so it was a big deal for me to finally get these. It is uh, AC Comics Jungle Girls. Now back in the, in the 30s and whatever, um, 30s, 40s, there was a whole bunch of different jungle girls in comics. There was Sheena, there was Nyoka, there was Tara, there was Tiger Girl, uh, I think there was a Leopard Girl. And anyway, these are reprints of all those various Jungle Girls from different comic companies put into one comic book. Now these are, um, Nyoka was probably the only one who like just wore khakis. Everybody else wore like different colors of, uh, of like jungle attire, but I, I thought these were fantastic. I just had to have them because, I mean, I can't go back and buy all top comics. I can't buy uh, jumbo comics. They're just, they're out of my price range. So for me to be able to get these, I got the complete run of the reprints. This is a uh, one through 16. If I can keep her from sinking there. Um, uh, Rula, Rula wore, uh, it wasn't leopard print. It was a uh, giraffe print. Like they all, and see, Tiger Girl always wore tiger stripes. Every comic company back then had like their own little, uh, their own niche on it, their own take. Most of them were blonde, some of them were, were brunette, but just the fact that every comic company, there were so many Jungle Girls out there that they actually came back later and reprinted all these Jungle Girl titles. And they're all black and white, but they're all fantastic. Just super. Super pleased with them. You can see Tiger Girls in color here. Sheena always wore leopard. And I wasn't sure at first, but uh, Shauna, the she-devil from Marvel, is a total ripoff of Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. She was first. There is Sheena again. Tara, who actually had her own comic back in the old days, but uh, was kind of revamped in like 1981, I think because she joined her, whatever year it was, Fem4 started. But uh, yeah, she's like a member of Fem4, so I thought that was cool. Uh, I forgot to totally mention my uh, special guest action figures. They're, these are pretty top shelf action figures today. These are Play Arts figures. I have Yuffie from Final Fantasy VII, and I have Selfie from Final Fantasy VIII, my favorite Final Fantasy game. Anyway, there's Terra, Vampire Queen. Jungle Girls number 14. Uh, Jungle Girls Wild Side number 15. 
and, and number 16. They changed it to wild side. They started throwing that <clears throat> tag in, which I'm okay with. It was just, I thought it was kind of a weird choice. Um, the next pile I've got, I got a tremendous deal on Veronica comics. And if you guys have watched any of my channels, you know I, I absolutely love Veronica comics. Well, I love Archie comics in general. But my one of my favorite all-time characters of the Archie universe is Veronica. Because she's awful. And that's just more interesting. Um, I got issue 102, 104. Looks like I got two issues of 102. This was just a big uh, random lot. It was listed as uh, low grade. Um, but I think these are actually in really great shape. For most of the time when I get Archies, they, they're, in, they're in bad shape. But these, I think, are in great shape. Uh, these were way less than a dollar an issue, which of course always makes me feel better. Veronica, number 100, number 108, number 99, number 98, 97, 96, looks like there's a pretty good run of them. 95, that one has got a tear in the corner. Honestly, I think that's the worst one I've seen so far. These all seem to be in excellent shape, which, like I said, for Archie comics, is pretty rare. And I'm getting close to getting a pretty solid run of Veronica's. Um, I don't have a lot of the earlier stuff. Issue 30 and under is a little bit sketchy. Um, and of course, like I've said before in the videos, I'll never be able to afford uh, issue 28. Number 115, number 116, 118, issue 119. I love these covers. I love how they always have like a plot going on. And if you've noticed, I noticed when I went through these, um, my gosh, her dad is always sitting there, always reading something. Uh, I thought that was funny. After I noticed it, I was like, this guy's always just sitting at the kind of, like, reading something on the chair, you know. Thought that was pretty hilarious. Her dad, obviously, very rich guy, plays a hilarious, hilarious, hilarious aspect of the books. Um, just good stuff. Looks like I got a couple of that one. Some of these, they did give me doubles. I found one that I had like three issues of. See, I got doubles of that one. That's not really, that doesn't bother me that much. These things still came out at a great price. Um, just thrilled to have them. And this is the, I think what year the series is. Mm -hmm. These are 96. I want to say the series started in like 93. Got 81. 82. Got a couple 82s. Number 83. And lucky for me, I didn't have any of these. Um, really early on in the series, uh, Veronica went to different places. And so every issue was Veronica in Texas, Veronica in England, Veronica in Canada. Those issues are actually quite rare and quite expensive. So I was thrilled to find some of those in here. And anything under 30, uh, issue 30, I was very pleased to find. Um, this, in my opinion, is one of the racier covers, but this is issue 20, 23. I think it's the same guy who has drawn them. He, he wrote issue 28, and the cover he put on it was, um, it was, I guess, too racy for Archie, and that cover got pulled. So if you find or have an issue of Veronica 28, it's, uh, it's, it's easily over a $100 book. Um, you could be looking at like 120 for a lot of them. I've, I've seen them priced up to... 150 or so, if you've got it, decent shape. Uh, that cover is just wild, pink flamingos, and they actually, they changed their color palette a lot for that particular issue, so I thought that was impressive. Issue 35, 39, two issues of 39, ooh, three issues of 39. My buddy Scott might be getting some doubles. I might just hoard them for myself. Uh, issue 42. Like I said, these lower issue numbers, much harder to get a hold of. 
I've never seen any of the single digit issues. At least I don't think so. Um, this one I actually have already. It's a double. Picked up just recently in a lot of stuff. Number 51. Veronica 52. 54. Amazes me how sometimes these really seem like they're in order and then sometimes they really seem like they're not. 56. 57. Then we jump to 64. I don't know. Big Archie fan, so I I decided to sell some of uh, a couple of key pieces from my ginormous action figure collection. If you guys have seen that, and I took the profits from that to really just knock out some titles that I've really wanted, um, and that's where I got the the money for this Veronica set and for the uh, for the Jungle Girl set. That was stuff that that's just been on my want list ever since I even heard it existed. And of course I was at first looking at the original titles of the stuff and there was just no way I can afford that. But once again, her dad's sitting there reading something. He's always sitting there reading something. Anyway, so I, I just decided I was gonna fill some of the stuff out that I wanted and that's what I did and that's what I got. Um, the only other thing I got is I've been trying to get into to more independent stuff. And I ended up the guy had lots of 100 comics, all independents, and he was selling them for 30 bucks a piece. And I offered him 25 and I bought two sets. So 50 bucks for 200 comics, that's like a quarter a piece. So let's see what I got out of that. I don't want everything to sink here, so we'll keep an eye on that. I got a couple issues of Shadow Man from Valiant. I'm a fan of Valiant, so I am I am happy with any Valiants I get. Um, I've been really impressed with... There's two stuck together. Really impressed with stuff like Magnus Robot Fighter and uh, Solar Man of the Atom. Fantastic books, so I've been really thrilled with those. Uh, so I got like quite a few issues of Shadow here. I got 17, 19, 15. I got one of those... Fancy foil covers of Exo Man of War number zero. Got a little bit newer Valiant with issue 48. Exo um, Man of War 28. These are definitely ones I don't have. So that's nice. Exo Man of War number 30. DC Vertigo 2020 Visions uh, 12 of 12. I have no idea what that is. I don't generally care for DC Vertigo stuff. It's just not very colorful and it's kind of, it's not really my thing. Super pleased to see an issue of American Flag in here. I love this book. It's got crazy art. Well, it's got decent, it's got decent art. I'm a fan of it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the series. So to have an issue I don't have, that's nice. I don't have a lot of them. Uh, first comics, Grimjack. Not familiar with that one. I know I've got some of them, but not a lot of them. I see alien monsters. I'm always down with that. Archer and Armstrong. Um, these I am not such a fan of because they're all Barry Windsor Smith stuff. And uh, I haven't, I, I've filmed it. I haven't put it up yet. I got a whole video of Valiant stuff uh, where I basically kind of, I don't really like Barry Windsor Smith's work. I. I, it's just not my style. I don't like it. I, I just don't like how it looks. And maybe that's me, but I'm just not a fan. Um, of course, a lot of independence would not be complete if you didn't get a bunch of uh, early image house stuff, um, which all kind of looks the same to me. I'm not crazy about it. I don't hate it. Um, yeah, they're real hard to read, but they're real fun to look at, in my opinion, so... Um, Stormwatch 2, it's something I'm sure I probably got somewhere. Stormwatch 3, pretty sure I don't have Stormwatch 5. Um, I'm positive I have this issue of Brigade, Brigade probably nine times over. I, that's, uh, yeah, I always get a freaking issue of Brigade. I'm sick of, sick of Brigade. Sick of it, man. Although, yeah. 
I don't think I have the first issue of Brigade, so. You know what? Even though I don't like it, it's Liefeld. It's early Liefeld. It's number one. I'm not mad at that. Uh, Vertigo Day Tripper. I don't know what that is, but. You know what? It doesn't look terrible. Got a fantastic cover of Mo Magnus Robot Fighter. Uh, the only sad part is that I do already have that book. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But I do not have that book. So that's good. I do have that book. I do not have that book. Remember that old thing with the cards where you go, got him, got him, need him, got him. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Um, he really stalked me with image. Pretty sure I have that image of hardcore. Uh, I don't hate Valiant. I, I am really pleased to see uh, there's a pretty good little run of uh, Defiant comics in here, which are definitely a flavor of independent stuff that I've been trying to get a hold of. And it's hard to buy on its own. People want like real money for it. If you're just looking for issues of, you know, Defiant comics, do a search for Defiant lots. And it, they want like real money for them. But if you buy them in lots like this, they're basically free, you know quarter a piece. I'm all about that. Um, Dark Horse Motorhead. That sounds really familiar. Can't remember exactly. Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Issue number one. That looks pretty sweet. Actually, I'm going to rip that out real quick. It's color. It says, you know, not all Defiance were color. A lot of them were black and white. But it's, it's good color and it's well done. I'll always take an issue with number one. Ooh, I got an old issue of Uncle Scrooge. That is flipping sweet. The Beagle Boys. All right, very pleased with that. Uh, another issue of Harbinger I don't have. And I don't think I have that one either. But now I have two of that one. So now I don't, I'm not excited about that one. Um, I do have an issue of that. I think I had several. Oh, Savage Dragon, number six. I know I have number one through five, so this goes right into my series. And that's pretty awesome. You got Red Dragon, Rapture going on. Early Savage Dragon stuff. I'm I'm into. That was that was good stuff. I I, I really enjoyed that stuff. Uh, Eternal Warrior number nineteen. It's one I don't have. Uh, DC Vertigo, The Invisibles, number 20. I don't think DC Vertigo should should be put in a, in a lot of independent titles, in my opinion. I think they're DC Comics. Call them what, call them what they are. Max 25. Oh, I got that figure. Oh, I love this. I love Max. I have never had anything up this far. I think I had... The farthest I got was Max 20. And that was like a long time ago, so... There's a lot of issues of Max I don't have. Uh, this is post Julie, so this is all just Max and Sarah, which that is awesome. This is not an original one. This is one of those uh, ones that they re-release later. Max number six, I know I have several of, at least a couple. It's fantastic. I mean, he fights a big shark, man. Uh, Mako, I think. Max number five. I, how can you not love Sam Keith's art? This is the one with the Dr. Seuss fairy tale in it. Not my favorite issue, but it's there. Uh, and Ryan and the Future Force, number 14. I know I don't have that, but I have quite a few issues of Ryan and the Future Force. So, bump the camera. Looks like I got... Sweet... Um, Lomax, number number two, Atlas Comics. Isn't At I think Atlas is what Marvel was before Marvel was Marvel. Or it was what Marvel was or tried to be after Marvel. I can't remember. I know it's some. it has something to do with a split of Marvel back in the day. Is Atlas books. So I'm very, very pleased to see one of those. 25 cent cover. I'll take one of those for 25 cents anytime. Um, the Deadly Duo image. Not heard of that one. But I see a large, uh, large Gator Man, scanty chick, comical-looking hero. I'm interested. 
Uh, Deadly Duo number one. The fact that you're starting me off with a number one, that pleases me. I got one and three. Um, image Alliance. I don't know what that is. But it looks like early image, which means it could be decent or it could be absolute trash. It, you can never tell on early image until you read it or try to. X Farce, first issue from Eclipse Comics. I love Eclipse Comics. And it's black and white. And it's beautiful. And there is cesspool. That is freaking awesome. This would have been even before Deadpool was ever like popular or cool. That's awesome. Um, Med Cry, Gray Matter. Not sure what that one is. Um, the Trail Boss from Rockin Productions. Black and white. The art looks good. I'm liking that. Definitely independent. 1995. I'll take that. Um, Heavy Hitters, Midnight Man, number one. Um, it's basically, uh, it's I think it was Marvel Comics' is darker epic comic run. First Comics, Mars. That's probably good. First Comics, I would put right, First Comics right in there with... Uh, with Eclipse Comics as just being a fantastic comic company. And yeah, this looks like fantastic stuff. Very pleased with that. Um, Wildstorm, The Authority, number 26. Martha Washington Goes to War. I'm not familiar, I remember these ads in Wizard all the time, but I don't remember actually uh, ever reading any of these, so. I don't remember like much acclaim to them either. I just remember them like advertising them and I thought they were pretty cool looking. Um, continuity comics, uh, Death Watch 2000, Earth number four. I have a lot of continuity comics and I'm a good with getting some more because they're just one of those independent companies that I would like a, a good taste of. Um, Impact comics, Jaguar number one, a book I have many times over. And a very important book. This book is in my top 50 um, because the Jaguar was one of the first books that I ever, one of the first independent titles that ever got me uh, craving that flavor, which I thought was cool. Uh, Wildstar number four, uh, the dude with the starfish on his chest. I have so damn many issues of Wildstar. There's, they, I think it only ran like five issues or some damn thing. And there is, I, I probably got Wildstar number one, probably four times. I got Wildstar number two, probably six issues of it i just do not care uh continuity comic samurai i think i have quite a few of these i'm pretty sure i don't have this one um art color is good of course it's a it's a continuity book and i am trying to snag more of those should be fighting a big giant warthog man that's usually good um continuity continuity comics uh megalith in the bag, looks like I got a Caliber Press, Raven Con uh, Raven Chronicles, not familiar with that. Um, Dagger Books, Team Anarchy. It is, in fact, color. I'd be interested to flip through that. Um, Troll number one, which I'm pretty sure I already have. Another continuity book that I don't have, uh, Shaman Zero. Sometimes I think that what hurt continuity comics and why you don't hear of them anymore today is because they just had so much shit going on with their cover. It's hard to, it's hard to follow it. It would look amazing on a comic shelf today, but it probably just kind of blended in back then. Okay, so I got Comico Fathom, number two. I know I have number one and I know I have number three, so I'm pretty sure this uh, completes my series. Yeah, because it's a three-part series. Um, Fathom is from the Elementals comic. Um, definitely one of my favorite favorite members of the team. So, very pleased to have one of those. I think that finishes out my series. Dark Horse Comics, Will to Power, number nine. Um, this one feels a little crispy. Turok Dinosaur Hunter, number 16. It is just a little bit water damaged, but... For a quarter, what are you gonna do? 
Martha Washington goes to war, number four of five. Yeah, I just, I don't know anything about these. I just remember, all I remember is Wizard promoting these things. But I don't know anything other than that. Just because Wizard promotes it doesn't mean it's going to be good. Um, images of Shadowhawk, number three. Okay, this is the same kind of art from uh, Trencher and uh, Lobo and Fantaside. Very heavy in the line work, and I don't like that art. I've seen it before. I didn't like it then. Death Blow. I don't know what. Oh, it's a Death Blow number one. I should keep it in the bag. It's probably worth a fortune. Uh, Defiant Comics number one, or uh, Dark Dominion number one. That's pretty cool. Uh, first issue Defiant stuff. Like I said, trying to get more Defiant. <laughs> Uh, DC Vertigo Unfollow. I don't know what that is. But it looks like your typical DC Vertigo stuff. Dark. Strangely animated. Not my thing. Union number four from Image. I don't know what that is. Real Science Adventures. Harris Comics. I've heard of Harris Comics. And this one is still sealed in the bag. That is awesome. Still has its collector hollow clear foil card thing in it. That's flipping sweet. I can't wait to open that thing. Um, we have no comics. What is the name around that? I can't even read it. Broadway Comics. Fatal number six. Pretty sure I have this issue. It's, yeah, I, I would remember that cover. Um, Rune number seven. Uh, this is after Malibu got sold, or Malibu Comics got bought out by Marvel. And the Ultraverse kind of, Marvel killed it after a little while. But this takes place after that, because I have the first nine issues of Rune, and then it switched to Marvel after they bought it. I do not have this issue, so I'm pretty excited to see that. And Barry Windsor Smith isn't working on it anymore, because he did all the ones from Ultraverse, Malibu stuff. And I hated it, because I hate, hate Barry Windsor Smith. Um, I know that's not a popular opinion. I just, everything looks like, sh like if you want your hero to look like beef jerky, just have a uh, Barry Windsor Smith draw it. Um, I'm not a fan. I know some people are. I just can't dig it. I have no issues of Wetworks. I have a whole bunch of their action figures. I do not have any of their books, so I'm very pleased to see I have an issue of Wetworks. There I go. I have two issues of Wetworks. Now I am rolling in it. Three issues of Wetworks. I'll bet you this book is crap. That's why I'm probably getting it. But anyway, I'm, I'm pleased to see it because to have the figures from a company and not have their book, I, I love to see their book. So I got 1311. Um, Ray Bradbury Comics. I, I'm not sure what that is, but it's tops. And it looks really good. And it comes with two collector cards in it. And it's sealed. It's still sealed. That is a thing of beauty. DC Vertigo, Don't Care, Books of Magic, number 12. Um, Kid Eternity, I've got quite a few issues of these. I know nothing about him yet, but this is probably the most interesting cover I've seen of him so far. Um, Valiant Image uh, Epilogue, basically the silver cover. I think I already have three copies of that. I'm not very excited about that. Um, Fables, I have Fables, but I don't think I have the Vertigo version of Fables. I think I have Fables from... Uh, I want to say dynamite makes them. Union number two, early image stuff. Something from Free Comic Book Day, which I don't think should count. Um, something else from Free Comic Book Day, which I also don't think should count. But this one looks way cooler than the other one. Free Comic Book Day, Uncle Scrooge. I will accept Uncle Scrooge as Free Comic Book Day fodder. I don't think I should get. I don't think I should be paying a quarter for it, but you know how I am. What are you gonna do? Um, para. Um, I don't see a comic coming. I guess Stephen Martinez. Or Martinez Martiner. Um, Fleetway slash Quality Comics. Dare the Impossible. Have not heard of that one. Space. I see space cops. I see space cop fights. I'm down with it. I will give it a try. Ooh! A Nocturnals miniseries. Number one. 
The covers on the Nocturnal series is, were fantastic. Some of the best stuff, uh, some of the best covers I think that came out of Malibu. So very pleased to see that. Um, Future Force number 16, some giant robot bug looking things. That's good. Um, Riot and the Future Force number 17. The very last comic is Innovation Comics, Max Bolin, The Executioner, which there was a whole bunch of novels based on these. Uh, kind of like, if you ever gone to, like, looked at the books at a truck stop, you'll find a huge pile of Max Bolin, Bolin novels. And this, the cover feels like a newspaper. The interior feels all glossy, which is a weird reversal, but the whole thing feels really, really floppy and thin. So that's weird, but I'll take it. Anyway, that is pretty much everything that has showed up at my mail in the last couple of days. I thank you so much for watching. Uh, these have been my books. Um, I'm fairly, fairly pleased with this uh, random lot. Uh, most of these Valiants I'm, I'm happy to pay a quarter for. There's some, there's some junk in here I'm not like thrilled about. Um, but I got a great deal on the Veronicas. Super happy to have the uh, Jungle Girls and the Archie Comics and Ninja Turtles that my wife picked up for me. That has been a long video, and I thank you so much once again for watching. This has been my story, and I will catch you guys later. Bye.